CES 2016. This year it's not a revolution, but it's an evolution of products. Drones, AKTV, wearables. But beyond thinking about just the products, let's think about the trends, what's emerging, and the implications for brands, for marketers, and consumers. For brands, it first matters, like, what do you stand for? What are you about? Who's your audience? And how do you want to reach them? And then the technology serves that mission. One of the high expectations this year, leading on from last year, was virtual reality and augmented reality. And we are seeing augmented reality and virtual reality start to combine, and we call that the blended realities. We're starting to see devices which will enable you to be able to pull down the screen and step into the virtual reality, but also pop up the screen, and then to be able to have an augmentation onto the real reality. I think the potential for VR and AR is massive. It's not going to be just for gaming. I think right now, gaming's going to drive a lot of it, because gaming often drives this sort of thing. I'm a sports fan. I think. VR for sports is potentially amazing. Imagine being in that courtside seat at an NBA game at home in a VR device. And then imagine that I see the fans in the crowd wearing a t-shirt from a sponsor, not the actual shirt they're wearing. It's kind of an interesting idea. Every single surface around us is becoming a digital screen, whether it's the in-car environment, whether it's the smart home environment, whether it's your mobile phone or your wearable. Everything around us, whether it's transparent screens, flexible screens, curved screens, we're just entering a world where every single thing, whether it's in stores, whether it's on our wrist, becomes another surface for us to work with advertisers. Watson can power a full-size humanoid robots that can understand you're speaking, speak back to you, and the applications for that are going to be tremendous in the, in, the, in the next few years. Since it had uh, like Watson helping to power the robot, it was able to process data in a, in a more intelligent way, and that's why the robot was then able to connect with me in a more intelligent way, because it had that power of technology. It seemed like a human. It was self-deprecating, it made jokes, it felt kind of awkward at times, and so I totally forgot it was a robot. People trying to find more human interactions with computers, whether it's voice with things like Siri, Cortana, whether it's sort of robotics that tries to be more humanoid and, and more approachable. I think it's a really interesting change. We're trying to make our technology more human as it also keeps us from spending time with humans. There's a tension there that's really interesting. The most interesting thing in wearables actually happens at either end of the market right now. It happens at the sort of healthcare end, like I'm trying to diagnose something for someone who's potentially ill, you know, so glucose monitoring, cardiovascular monitoring, or it happens at the highest end of the market, at, at the professional athlete level, where I'm trying to gather data that really lets me optimize performance. Because there are more sensors in more places and often more close to our body, we're actually able to get more intimate data than ever before. Whether it's our weight, whether it's our fat levels, whether it's our heartbeats, whether it's our stress levels in our voice, we're already entering this world where people are becoming quite happy to measure things that are very, very key to their personality and their state of mind. When you move from just collecting that data to actually providing actionable information, that's when I think the market can really take off. I think something that's interesting, you know, the past couple of years at CES, there's been this big push to have the, the connected home. Products like Nest, appliances, things like that. And what I'm fascinated by is actually, I think that what's going to connect the home is the car. When all cars can talk to each other, when all cars become self-driving, it becomes a kind of new extension of our personal device system. So we can almost think of our media environment as being our TVs, our phones, and now our in-car entertainment systems as well, with things kind of seamlessly beamed across them thanks to the cloud. Right now, we settle for compatibility, and we don't even get compatibility between our devices much of the time. But people are going to start demanding interoperability. Consumers want flexibility. The most interesting technology experiences are happening when brands partner together, whether it be Netflix with LG, Ford with Amazon, Watson with Under Armour. These are really where the true potential of creative thinking lies. Brands that are doing it well, I think the brands that are organically growing, bringing in smart solutions to their existing product ranges, or moving their existing product ranges forward with other smart technology, either through partnerships or just obviously generally innovating that themselves. Brands need to think about creating collaborative partnerships, integrating hardware and software, extending applications, personalizing services, and using data in smarter ways. Consumers don't just want more, they actually want better.